What is going on YouTube family? It is Andrea here at VW Family Farm. I am taking care of a little problem today and this is something that you may experience if you ever try to make soap. This is a video you might want to hang on to because I am going to show you what to do when things go wrong and your soap doesn't turn out for one reason or the other. All is not lost. Do not trash it. It's a lot of money in ingredients. It's a lot of time you've put into it and you definitely can save it. So let's get busy. So you can see I have been hard at work making soap. I have soap galore. This is for my last few batches I'm gonna make and then I have a whole nother shelf down here. Uh, lots of soap curing on the rack. So, um, but I am working to fill this shelf up and I have ran into a problem. Just a little note, I'm gonna link these molds below. These are my favorite molds. I've struggled with a lot of molds over the years of making soap. Um, it's a wood box with a silicone mold inside that you can basically turn inside out, upside down, whatever you need to do and get that soap out of there and keep it looking beautiful in the process. You can definitely get cheaper molds, the little plastic ones that are in shapes and things. Those are neat, but they're really hard to work with, and so I prefer these. So let's get to the problem. You can see this has been curing for two days. It should be pretty hard and easy to get out, and you can see it won't even pull away from the side of this, and if I push on it, it's just still really liquidy. This batch is a little bit better, but still, it should not be like that. It should be harder at this point. Um, you can see it, I don't know if y'all can see with the lighting, but you can see pockets of oil. That's just a bad thing. Okay, so let's get to it. Why would you want to, what they call, rebatch soap after you've made it? Well, obviously, in my case, there's something wrong. It did not turn out right. And the backstory on this, this happened to me last year in making soap with a couple batches. I had to rebatch them. And I blamed it on orange essential oil because that was in each batch. Uh, that didn't turn out right. All the others turned out beautifully, not one problem. And then lo and behold, here it is this year and it's happened again, but guess what? There's no orange in these soaps. And so I have narrowed it down. And what was also in last year's soap with the orange in fall scented soaps, orange and like cinnamon and clove go together really well. They smell really nice together and that cinnamon and clove were in there as well. And, and that is what is in these. So I'm thinking it's cinnamon or clove. More than likely clove is the problem and it is just not reacting well in my soaps and in this particular recipe. Not saying that it won't work in other recipes because I have a whole nother recipe that uses different oils. It might react fine, but it is not working out in this one. So that's why I have this oily mess. So that's one reason you wouldn't want to rebatch. Another reason is um, you want to add in sensitive like add-ins like lavender buds or lighter fragrances or things that might react bad uh, in the original process when it saponifies and goes through that gel phase and heats up in the molds. Those might not do well with the lye. And in this case, the saponification has pretty much already happened which just simply means the lies reacted with the oils. So you still wanna take precautions. You're gonna see me wearing gloves, but for the most part, it's already saponified. And now if I rebatch it, I could add in some lavender buds or delicate things like that. That's just the one that's on the top of my head um, that might turn dark and gross looking if you put them in at the beginning, but they can stay pretty and fragrant and all that when we're rebatching. Also, it's good for like delicate colors because sometimes you can add in something like, for instance, on one of mine, I added in something green and it went through gel and it turned purple, uh, which is pretty. I'm fine with it, but if you're going for a specific color, sometimes rebatching and some of those colors that are more sensitive to going through that gel phase uh, will work out better on a rebatch. And another thing, uh, this is, and I should have mentioned this at the beginning, this is cold process soap, but when I pour it in the molds, it goes through what I'm calling a gel phase. You've heard me say that a couple times so far. That's where it heats up in the mold. It actually starts to look like a gel before it eventually turns like usually white or light yellow and hardens into what we see as a bar of milk soap. In this case, cow milk soap. A lot of people make goat milk soap and turns that creamy white or ivory color. Um, but there are sensitive things you can add in at the beginning that through that gel phase would melt. 
Okay, so before we get to this, if you're considering rebatching, I do have to bring up a couple of cons to this as well. There's all those pros I mentioned, but there is a couple cons. It is gonna more than likely look more primitive or rustic looking. Um, it may not completely melt. It may be kind of a gloopy, gobby mess trying to get into the molds. It may have some air bubbles trapped in it, so you can't ever get it completely smooth. Um, but if you've got a mess like I do, it's better than what you have now. So yes, it may be sort of primitive looking. That's just one of the cons we have to accept. And finally, it's extra work. So if you're doing this on purpose for delicate scents or colors or those things I mentioned, this is gonna be extra work where you just get everything made and pour it in the mold and then you're good to go to unmold it and start cutting it. You're gonna have to do all that again. You're gonna have to spend more time on this batch of soap rather than moving on to future batches. So that's also something to consider. Okay, so let's do this. So now is gonna determine what you're trying to fix and what you're trying to accomplish here. That's gonna determine what all you do at this point. Um, you might have messed up the measurements of oil in your soap or the amount of lye. If you, it's gonna be critical to know the mistake you made. Uh, in my case, I'm almost 100% positive. It was an add-in. Uh, mine turned grainy as I was trying to mix it up. And um, so it went into like what's called the rice stage. It, it riced up on me and it looked like it, it was full of rice. So that's all I'm trying to fix. You can see this is a gloopy mess. So I'm going to not even try to put it out like I was doing just now. I'm just going to glop it into this crock pot. If you can get yours out in a whole loaf, you're going to want to grate it if it's uh, pretty hard you can grate it if it's pretty soft you can chop it with a knife that's what I was going to do was just chop it up but this is not even able to be chopped it's just too liquidy and you can see how it seized up on me in the bottom that's pretty ugly but as that all melts and I get it put together it's going to be amazing the transformation so you can see this one's the same way this just did not work at all probably won't be using cinnamon or clove in soap recipes in the future. Okay, so you can see I got it all kind of glopped in there. Um, like I said, you can grate, you can cut at this point. Either one will work fine. Now, we're going to set this on low, and we are going to put a lid on it. I've got a little mess up top, but that is okay. I can clean that up later. And we are going to let this melt for an hour. What we are looking for, and you can already start seeing it melt around the sides, is it's going to get translucent. And in about an hour, we're going to give it a good stir. And then after that, we're going to let it go a little bit longer. But first off, we're just wanting it to melt. Now, word of caution. If you had to cut or grate, at this point, when you're first putting it in the crock pot, you're gonna wanna add a little milk or water or some type of liquid. And from the tutorials I've watched and read over time of doing this, it says, think of it like your soap is a salad and you're adding a little dressing. That's about how much milk or water you wanna add. You're just getting it going, giving it a little liquid to start melting um, that gives you something to stir up in there. But the more you add at this point, you have to let that cure out of it later so it's not like you're going to add too much and just run it but you are going to have to let that cure out at some point also if your problem and the reason you're rebatching is because you forgot an oil or you used too little of an oil you realized you made a mistake or uh, you used too little of a lye mixture and it's just not working if you know the mistake uh, it's okay to add some more lye water at this time water and lye mixed together you need to know your mistake, though, if you're going to start doing things like that, adding oils, adding lime water, because if you just start adding stuff, it more than likely won't work. So, but you can see mine is liquefied enough. I don't need any water, milk, or anything, and lye was not my problem. I had the correct amount of lye, so I am just rebatching because of what the scent did to this. So, you can walk away for an hour, and then we will come back and check it. Okay, so it's been about an hour. You can see it has liquefied quite a bit. We are just going to give it a good stir. There's still a lot of chunky pieces in here. Uh, if you grated it, obviously you're not going to have these big chunks like I do. Um, so I'm just going to kind of break those up a little bit. 
and give it a good stir around in there and then I'm going to leave it for another hour and by then I'm hoping a lot of these big chunks will be melted and it'll be just one kind of translucent mixture. Okay, so it has been another hour. This is what we are looking for. This is all melted. It's got this translucent look to it. That is the point we are trying to get to. So we are ready to pour this back in the molds. I'm going to carry this entire crock pot over uh, to where I have my molds set up and I'm going to get it back in there. So now we just need to get it back in the molds. Sometimes I don't have it melt this good and I have to kind of glop it in the molds. You may have to do that. Um, just whatever you got to do to get it pushed back in these molds. Sometimes it's kind of a, a gelatinous glob, I'll call it. And I've had to squish it in there. Um, but we are saving what otherwise would have been thrown away. So you can see I just got it poured and it is already starting to set up. It doesn't have those big oily pockets like it did before. It looks more like a gel. That is totally normal. Um, and it will still dry and look somewhat like it would have had it worked the first time. It's not going to look exactly like it. You can see this has some air bubbles and some imperfections. That can just be the bottom of your bar because you're going to dump it out and cut it. Uh, it's not really going to matter. It's just going to look, like I told you, a little more primitive. These were some um, globs that were on the scooper I was using that had already begun to set up. Once I got it all poured, I just put those down in there. Those will just look like a little bit different colors once it sets up and it'll actually look pretty cool. So that is basically it. Uh, you're going to leave it in the molds for 24 hours and then it can be taken out just like if you had fresh made soap and slice it and put it on the rack to cure so that you can make more soap and fill those molds up again. If you don't want to use a crock pot, there's other ways to do this. You can use a dish in your oven and just make sure and cover it uh, with foil or a lid or something like that. Set your oven on 150 to 170. Uh, depending on how low your oven goes and the times will be about the same as a crock pot on low so you can definitely do that in the oven you can also use what's called a baking or an oven bag like what you would put a big turkey in to cook um, and you can put it in there and put your soap in there if you are fixing a batch of soap like you're putting in more lye water or you're putting in some oils you left out go ahead and put those in at the very beginning tied up real tight at the top with the tie that it comes with and put that down in boiling water let it gently boil this process is going to go a lot quicker than the crock pot or the oven probably only about 30 minutes or so and it will all be melted you're going to gently open the top and that's when you're going to add any um, color or scent you might want to add at that point and then tie that back up you can squish it around after it's cooled enough for you to handle it just for a little bit. Don't let it cool too much where it starts setting up. Uh, put some gloves on maybe. Squish it around in the bag to get all that mixed up together that you've added. And then the easiest part is uh, mine was a little thinner today than usually it gets. It's usually a little more gloopy. And so you can just snip the end off the corner of that oven bag and you've got like a little pastry bag to put it in your molds that way. Especially if you're using little small decorative like flower molds or something like that. That would be super easy. And finally, I wanted to show you what it looks like when you're done rebatching a batch of soap. So this is a bar that I made this year and it's got some orange peel spread throughout it. That's why the colors are different. Um, I really like this bar, but this has not been rebatched. But I want to show you a bar that has been. So this is actually a bar that has been rebatched. You can see all the cool colors in it. Um, it's, it's got more of the darker brown up top. This is not something I did on purpose. It just came from the rebatching process. But look how similar those look. I know they're different shapes because of different molds. But this looks just fine really compared to this to me. Now what they're saying on the rustic and not smooth, you can see the top is a little less perfect. Um, than say this one. This has a really smooth edge, but really I don't really care and my customers don't seem to mind either. So um, this is a perfect way to save a batch of soap rather than just chunking a bunch of expensive ingredients. 
I hope this is a video that you will hang on to in case you need it because if you're a soap maker, more than likely sometime you will. And I appreciate you guys watching. I will see you guys on the next video. Please subscribe so you can stay up to date with all our videos. Hit the notification bell so you're notified when we post. And we will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching and God bless.